and welcome to the presentation. Thank you very much for joining PMX Agency and Hitwise for a look at luxury brands and consumers in 2018. Now, I actually like to introduce your two speakers on the line. The first is Glenn Lalich, Vice President of Research at PMX Agency. Joining Glenn is John Fetto, Senior Analyst at Hitwise. Today's agenda will cover top brands and drivers, luxury on Amazon, search and social, and we'll close with some hot holiday products. I'll hand it over to Glenn to kick us off. Glenn, the floor is yours. Hi, this is Glenn, uh, VP of Research. Very happy to be here uh, to celebrate the ninth year of publication of our luxury study, which PMX Agency produces in partnership with Hitwise. Uh, the annual report seeks to understand the success of today's top luxury brands online, and we use site visits, brand searches, and social reach as proxies for growth and consumer engagement. So we have over 90 apparel brands included this year, it's the most ever. And they range from truly historic brands like Louis Vuitton, which is 164 years old, and Hermes, 181 years old, to relatively new but fast-growing brands like uh, Isabel Morant, which is just a little over a decade old at this point, I think. So a reasonable question for any reader or viewer is why do a luxury study? And the most direct answer is significant sales. Uh, per Bain, global sales of luxury goods is projected to be $313 billion globally. 30% uh, of those sales were in the U.S., which means the U.S. remains the largest luxury market. It has fallen a percentage point or two over the past few years, but it is still the biggest. But on the softer side, you know, the luxury market is a study in branding. Uh, luxury marketers are, of course, expert at quality and craftsmanship. That is table stakes for all these sort of esteemed logos. But they are also expert at creating brands truly that are both captivating and resilient, kings and queens of invention and reinvention, and surprisingly of late, even disruption. And their progress and success in modern times is a lesson to all marketers, kind of regardless of size, price point, or demographics. So, you know, we've been publishing this, this report for a few years now, and I have to say that this has been one of the more notable years, even transformative, if you will. Things that we've been saying were kind of coming for a while, like younger buyers, more men, more customization, and even a concerted effort to court both high income and maybe not quite so high income. All of those things kind of came to the fore over the past 12 to 16 months, which you'll see in some of the numbers I present here, as well as in the, in the full report if you choose to download that. Uh, a few notable themes, there were, there were many more than what I have here. But digital creativity, um, on the left, you know, from Givenchy was a campaign that revolved around a CGI-created influencer named Nunuri. And Nunuri was actually part of a full Instagram takeover. There's lots of other, some of it is tech-driven, some of it is just kind of pure creativity in the digital realm. But luxury brands are always four on that front. In the middle, personalization came into play among luxury brands. You know, here is illustrated by a Louis Vuitton bag with Louis Vuitton badges that, pe that folks pick. There was quite a bit of activity along these lines, including Fendi bag bugs and Gucci DIY monogramming. Uh, but the biggest story is on the far right, which is casual wear continues to have a major moment in luxury. Uh, the sneaker trend has been widely reported, and it will continue to be widely reported, I suspect. But there are also there are other items which are popping here. There's belt bags, fanny packs, hoodies, sweatshirts, and things like that. So, and continuing on that idea of transformation, one other place where we saw some very significant changes is in the demographics for luxury site visitors. Male online visitors to luxury brand sites is up nearly 10% year over year. And this growth is tied specifically to younger men. Luxury sites are also attracting a concentration of younger visitors uh, compared to prior years, regardless of gender. The percentage of 18 to 24 year olds is up overall. Uh, females are up 3.2%, males up 2.5%. And if you're wondering what's driving this, like you might consider even here one of the luxury brands that saw the biggest changes in its site traffic. Um, and that would be Balenciaga. Um, online visitors to the Balenciaga site have shifted towards men. Uh, in the study period we had, they were up to 50% male. Uh, a year ago, it was only 42%. This change is tied in part to the brand's popular casual wear, you know, under the creative influence of the Milan designer, uh, Dimna Vasalia, uh, and Balenciaga site visits grew 107% year over year. 
Before we leave this section, kind of this intro section of the talk, I wanted to point out that there were so many notable changes in growth that we created a whole new section up front called Lux Notables, where we spotlighted some of the key brand stories. And two examples here are for Louis Vuitton on the left and Loewe on the right. Uh, they both stand out. First and foremost, they both have new creative directors or relatively new creative directors who are both the millennials, uh, Virgil Abloh, Jonathan Anderson, and both also saw huge increases in their online metrics. They're not really at the top of any of our list, but like across the board, they all had significant site traffic up, YouTube views up, Facebook up, Instagram up. Now, beyond those kind of comparable success metrics, they did take different approaches in other regards. I mean, Louis Vuitton emphasizing streetwear a bit more, while the Weve was kind of trying to get its name out there more, you know, by turns more fanciful and also more self-deprecating. In that the Weve example, there's a video still from YouTube. If you haven't seen that, it's like by far their most popular video, and it's a series of the Weve models being asked to pronounce the brand name and not being able to pronounce the brand name correctly. Right. So let's get a better sense of the kind of broad luxury apparel landscape. You know, who are the online luxury leaders? which brands had the biggest share of total visits during our 12-month study period. And here they are, at least a few of them. As you can see, you know, starting with Michael Kors in the upper right portion of the, of the donut here, if you move around clockwise, the top 10 luxury brands capture the vast majority of traffic, uh, nearly 75%. The leaders, Michael Kors, Ralph Lauren, Louis Vuitton, Coach, and Gucci, are the same as reported last year, uh, a slight shift in order, but they're the same. They kind of underscore the authority that these brands maintain. One thing that I do like to point out is that three of these largest, Michael Kors, Ralph Lauren, and Coach, uh, they all have exclusive luxury offerings, but they also have very significant mid-market lines, uh, you know, reaching out to a broader, less affluent market. And that, in part, you know, explains some of their size here in this particular donut. Uh, versus Gucci and Louis Vuitton, which that is far less the case in their share. So the next thing we want to look at is which luxury brands have seen the most success or at least the most positive change online in terms of attracting more visitors over the past 12 months. So on the left uh, here, I'm showing you is a year-over-year -year variance, which means which brands attracted more visitors compared to a year ago in total numbers. Um, several of the largest luxury brands grew dramatically in total visits year over year. Uh, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Michael Kors, Chanel, and Coach all gained from 2 to 7 million total visits in the last 12 months. Gucci tops this list for the second year in a row, and the brand continues to see sort of amazing growth under the creative direction of Alessandro Michele. Now, another way to look at year-over-year -year variance is by percent growth. So which brands attracted more visitors compared to a year ago as the percentage? So the chart on the left, what we, talk, we started talking about, is often dominated by big brands getting even bigger. This alternate view on the right really helps us kind of spotlight comparatively smaller brands that are seeing significant growth relative to their size. So in this case, at the top of that list is Isabel Morant. Tops, you know, growing 163% in the past year. Um, now the thing is that Isabel Morant has had a site up for a while, but they didn't launch an e-commerce enabled site until mid-2017, which probably accounts for some of that growth. So the data we get from Hitwise and work with doesn't simply tell, it tells us what brands are growing, which is just what we looked at, but also gives us a lot of insight into what consumers are doing, what paths they're taking, what types of brands and products they're seeking. And so clickstream data in particular tells us what site a visitor, visitor was on before they arrived at a luxury brand site and then where they went after leaving a luxury brand site. And related to where luxury visitors are coming from, uh, two of the largest sources of traffic for the category are search engines at 49.7%, they're on the left, and shopping sites. Now, search engines account for nearly 50% of all visits to luxury brand sites. That's more than any other single source of traffic by far. And notably, higher than the 39% that we, if we took all apparel marketers, search, you know, search engine traffic is 39%. So in that way, Google is more critical to luxury brands than the broader marketplace. Um, now, on the, on the right, visits from other shopping sites is the next biggest source of traffic. Uh, it rolls up to 21.4%, meaning about one in five visitors to a luxury brand site came from some other type of luxury site. 
These could be other luxury brand sites, department stores, online stores, pre-owned, et cetera. And you'll notice on the, the table on the left there, uh, Louis Vuitton is at the top of the luxury brand list, and it represents 1.5% of all traffic to other luxury brand sites. So Louis Vuitton like, drives over three times more traffic, first off, than any other luxury brand on that list, but it also drives more traffic to luxury sites than Amazon, Macy's, Nordstrom, uh, Neiman Marcus, and, and many others. In that way, we often like to point out that Louis Vuitton remains sort of the quintessential luxury brand as it's the one brand that visitors are likely to have within their luxury kind of consideration process. Now, I noted that 21.4% of all traffic to luxury brand sites originated from another shopping site, but we're also interested in where those visitors go after they visit a luxury brand site. You'll notice this figure is considerably larger. 38.9% of visitors to a luxury site brand, sorry, luxury site, brand site will go to another shopping site. In other words, close to 40% will keep shopping. Uh, one of the places where consumers overall often keep shopping is at Amazon. I'll put this up here. So one, you know, those arriving at luxury brand site from Amazon is about 1.1, but those going to Amazon after visiting a luxury site is about double that. So there's a lot of interest from our clients and others about Amazon. Amazon is a bit of a challenge for researchers to study fully. Just, you know, a lot happens behind sort of the walled area once you get inside of Amazon, which is why I'm really excited that John uh, has some great data on Amazon that he is going to share. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Amazon. Glenn. John, you there? Yep. Yeah, uh, thanks. This is a great way to highlight some of the hitwise data and love what you guys do every year. Um, obviously, we get a lot of those questions um, that you were just talking about about Amazon. So, you know, the question is luxury brands on Amazon, and the answer is luxury brands on Amazon. We're definitely seeing a lot of luxury brand uh, activity on Amazon. Um, there's a little bit of, of an asterisk there because it, it is represents. Uh, less activity than I think we could be seeing on Amazon. So if we go to the next slide, we'll talk about, you know, a little bit more about what Hitwise is finding. So with our Amazon retail intelligence uh, data, we looked at those same 10 top brands that Glenn identified earlier in the presentation as being the top luxury brands online. If we looked at Michael Kors, Versace, Coach, Ralph Lauren, Dior, and et cetera. And we looked at the page views that these branded products are receiving on uh, on Amazon for the past uh, 11 months or so. And then we also looked at the total number of purchases. And you can see that by far, Michael Kors products are leading the path in terms of page views. But if we go ahead and layer on top of that, the total purchases that we're seeing, we see that Versace um, is a, a, the clear winner. So we've seen Michael Kors products are received about 4.4 million page views over the last 11 months. And Versace products had about 170,000 um, registered purchases, uh, according to Hitwise, over the last 11 months. Those are two, by far, the two biggest leaders. Coach um, is, you know, flying there with a decent third place. And then pretty much after that, we've got uh, Ralph Lauren, Dior, and Yves Saint Laurent coming in at, at, you know, after that. And then the rest of the brands quickly kind of trail off. We did see, you know, Gucci registered a decent number of purchases. Um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But really the key leaders there are Michael Kors and Versace and I think Coach um, when it comes to who's currently uh, receiving traffic and doing uh, and generating sales on Amazon. And we go to the next slide, we'll see what are the top selling products, individual products, not just brand. Um, and no surprise given the fact that Versace has such a, a significant lead in terms of overall purchases that the top three best-selling products are Versace um, branded products. And, and in fact, they're all fragrances. The fragrance brands are regularly fragrance products are really dominating when it comes to purchases on Amazon. And so really a good entry point, I think, for, for brands to get exposure to consumers who they might be able to expand to other branded uh, products outside of the, of the fragrance space. But in fact, we saw among the top 25 best-selling luxury products 
on Amazon. 24 of them were fragrances. So the um, the one there on the left, the Eros Eau de Toilette Spray for Men, the 3.4 fluid ounces, uh, there were 21,000 purchases. And then the next one, Crystal by Gianni Versace for Women, had two different variations. One was a 0.7 ounce mini bottle and a three ounce bottle being the second and the third best purchases. If we wanted to look at kind of the non-fragrance uh, products that are selling on Amazon, no surprise here. Again, these are Michael Kors products, all, through, all of the top three non-fragrance products. And as we saw, they had Michael Kors was the second best-selling luxury brand on Amazon. And there's a pretty interesting variation of, of products here. The Michael Kors Slim Runway Watch was the best-seller, 3.3 million purchases. Uh, this a magnetic charger for Michael Kors smart watches, it looks like, you know, just like a charger for your Apple Watch, but it's specifically designed to work with various um, Michael Kors smart watches, which you can also buy on Amazon as well. And this is just a picture of one of the watches um, that it works with. And then we've got some aviator sunglasses here, which were the third best selling luxury non fragrance product um, on Amazon over the last 11 months, selling just about 1.3 thousand. Uh, units um, during that time. Here are the next slide. So we saw how each of the brands are performing in terms of generating page views and um, and purchases, but we're also able to look at internal search on Amazon. In fact, Amazon is is becoming pretty much the shopping go to search engine, generating more internal search activity sometimes than like Yahoo or Bing. Um, and we can tell a lot about what people are actually hungry for, not just specifically what they're looking for, because sometimes the market is not delivering exactly what they want. And in fact, this is a great example of this, where we saw that Gucci had about 10% of the page views that Michael Kors had. It actually had more references in internal search on Amazon than Michael Kors, representing almost a fifth of all of the branded search mentions um, among those top 10 brands that we looked at. In fact, so if you look, we have, I think, an animation here that shows some of the top um, Gucci searches that we saw, and we saw like hundreds of them. Um, but you will see like people are looking for Gucci belts. Um, even some people are looking for fake Gucci um, uh, and Gucci shirts. But then we saw the other two brands, really Michael Kors and Coach, Interestingly, because Versace is, even though they had the most purchases, people weren't necessarily ser searching out Versace. They're probably more likely to be seeking out uh, perfumes and fragrances instead in, in, in arriving at the Versace product in the end. But really dominating in terms of references, Gucci, Michael Kors, Coach, and, and I think Ralph Lauren would be rounding out those top four. Now we look at kind of the next slide, I think, shows some of the key keywords that we're seeing beyond brand mention, but the keywords that are associated with those luxury brands on Amazon. And I know that Glenn's going to talk about this in a larger sense um, in terms of, of uh, search engine mention, but we see handbags is the number one keyword associated with those luxury searches followed by belts, uh, pretty closely followed by belts and facts and shirts and perfume uh, rounding out and watches rounding out the top five. But again, this points to, even though we saw the vast majority of the top purchases on Amazon were perfume and fragrance brands. Handbags and belts were actually more often the source or the, the intended item that people were searching for when searching searches included reference of a luxury brand. And then interestingly, among the top 15 uh, keywords that we saw referenced on Amazon, the words replica and fake were also commonly mentioned. So people not just looking for the um, the original uh, luxury products, but also trying to get uh, knockoffs via Amazon as well. And there are definitely some listings for replica products on Amazon that people are, are delivering and the brands could probably um, step in to make sure that they're combating um, that knockoff um, market on Amazon. Now, if we go to the next slide, I think it shows the seasonality that we've seen in terms of purchases. Um, the Amazon data goes back to November 2017, so we're almost at a full year of data under our belt here. And we see that the vast majority of purchases um, occurred during the months of, of November and December. 15% of those purchases um, over the last 11 months were in November and 32% were in December. So we are, um, we're absolutely in the period where people are going to be buying a, the, a, a very large number of 
luxury products and probably again going to the fragrance category on Amazon through the holiday season as guest wear. I think we'll, we'll probably pass it back over to Glenn now to talk about search. Great, thank you, John. So yeah, we've been talking about digital kind of consumer behaviors previously as they relate to clickstream, but when it comes to intent, we also can leverage search data. Uh, and based on Google's 50% share of all luxury site traffic, monitoring search terms and search intent are incredibly important to luxury brands. So we already know that two of the biggest types of search terms for retail are brand searches, like say in this instance, Gucci, or brand plus product searches, which we'll look at in a second, like Gucci handbags. So first, we looked at brand name only. And for those types of searches, luxury brands command the lion's share of clicks, 68.9%. When consumers search for a luxury brand by name without including any additional modifying keywords, they overwhelmingly want to visit the brand site. This is pretty much as it should be. There's nothing more valuable to a brand than its name. It also speaks to intent. Uh, if I'm a luxury shopper and I search for Gucci, I typically want to go directly to Gucci. I want the full brand experience, maybe a more complete line of products, offerings, what's new, even potentially just for inspiration. Moving to the next slide, if I add a product term like handbag to the brand name, so say Gucci handbag is my search, what path I choose to take based on the search results is a lot more varied than just a pure brand search. So for brand name plus handbag, luxury brand site share of clicks falls by more than half. It was 68%, only 30%. While department stores shares triple to 16.3% and online stores like Net-A-Porte and Amazon, which we were just talking about, stores selling pre-owned and other players also start to capture a more measurable share of those brand plus handbag searches. Now, brand and product terms typically indicate a stronger likelihood to purchase. So what we're seeing here is that the clearer my intent to purchase is, the more likely I am to explore other options. You know, maybe I want to see if the item is less expensive someplace else, or if I can get it pre-owned, or, or maybe I want to shop for multiple brands at the same time. So to explore this phenomenon just a little bit more, on this slide, I added the product term shoes instead of handbag. So this search was like, you know, an example would be Gucci shoes. So in this case, the path I choose to take based on search results is actually at its even more varied than handbags. Uh, for brand name plus shoe terms, luxury brand sites fall to about 25%, while everything else, department store, online deal sites, et cetera, they all kind of grow as possibilities. You'll notice that even pre-owned grows, you know, which is the yellow 7.3%. Last year when we ran these numbers, pre-owned sites driven by shoe terms was around 4%, uh, but now it's up like 65, 70%, 7.3. Unlike, just point this out, because unlike pre-owned handbags, which have kind of a history in resale, traditional luxury shoes haven't had that much of a presence in resale. And so we're sort of certain that part of that growth in pre-owned sales for shoes, it's tied to the explosion of casual wear or sneakers in particular, because Sneakers certainly do have a established history <clears throat> in a resale market. All right. uh, one final slide related to search. Um, in this exercise, we take all the search terms that draw traffic to all the 90 plus luxury brand sites over the, the study period, and we break the full search expressions down into individual keyword components just to see what pops. And what popped this year for certain is the, the theme is consistent throughout the study are casual wear terms. Uh, on the left, you'll see sneakers and slides showing up right after shoes. A little further down, that doesn't have an arrow next to it, but like slip-ons and things like that. And on the apparel side, um, you'll see hoodies and even sweatshirts a little further down popping. Uh, not shown here, but on the, the handbags and accessories, fanny will show up as a single word for fanny pack. Um, this is not necessarily the first time we've seen all of these terms. Some of them are totally new but all of them have grown by either 50 or 100%. And so, John, I hope we want to take a second for you to talk a bit more about the, like what we're calling the casual luxury shopper. 
Yeah, thanks. Yeah, Gwen and I, when we were talking about this, I just said, like, we've got to learn a little bit more about who these people are driving this um, growing trend of, of casual luxury shoppers. And so we took a list of those those terms, those, those searches that Glenn identified as ha containing some of the, the more casual uh, luxury apparel items like hoodie and sweatshirt and sneakers. We took a look at all of those terms that were driving visits to those luxury sites that PMX had, had put together. And then we created an audience around them in our audience view platform. So we said, you know, they had to have searched for these casual luxury terms and visit a luxury site, and then we can profile them. So we ran a profile snapshot report, and we learned that there are about 50, 500,000 Americans over the last six months or so that fall into this luxury casual shopper set. Um, and that's about 5% of all luxury shoppers, but a pretty significant number of consumers. And, and I'm sure that number would be significantly higher if we were looking at a period covering the holiday season, as we know that a lot of the purchases go up significantly. So 500,000 is a pretty good baseline number, and I'm sure it would grow in the next, in, in the next few weeks. Um, but what we learned about them is that they're primarily ages 18 to 24. I think over well over a third of them are in that age group. And that means that they're about 50% more likely to be, um, you know, Gen Z or, or um, tail end millennials. Um, we also see it naturally among, among people of that age group, they're more likely to be students or 50% more likely to be students. Um, we also profiled them via their mosaic segment uh, type, and we saw that the aspirational fusion segment rose to the top with the highest index at about 160 or so. And that's a segment that's very urban. Um, they are young, often single. Sometimes they're parents, um, but kind of young parents. Um, the other thing that we know about the aspirational fusion is that they are aspirational. They don't really have necessarily significant funds to um, to provide them with the things that they're they're seeking um, but they do save some of their money and get some of the, some of those key items and it makes sense that they're looking at some of the lower end like hoodies um, sweatshirts and fanny packs just so they can have a piece of luxury um, and that can be something that grows with them over time um, we also know that they're more likely to be gamers they're more likely to be early adopters and very tech savvy Another interesting thing, even when compared to other luxury shoppers who we know to be fairly celebrity influenced, this group is even more likely, 40% more likely to say that things like, um, I want to, I'm, I'm more motivated to buy products if I see my favorite celebrity using them and whatnot. And then another big piece, and I know Glenn is going to talk about this in just a couple of slides, is that these are really the group that is our highly um, social media focused Instagram. They're going to follow their favorite brands and repost and review and share their feedback and, and thoughts about different brands. So this, if, when we're talking about the kind of the luxury um, social media consumer, these are really the, the audience who are probably going after most, most significantly. Um, and then the next slide, just, you know, to wrap up quickly, this little uh, brief profile uh, of this emerging segment is where else is the, where else are these would these folks uh, shop? And we saw that they're about three times more likely to shop online at Zoomies, two and a half times more likely to shop at both Supreme and Grail. Um, Fashion Nova also stands out. Urban Outfitters and ASOS, we saw not only are they more likely to just be browsing on those sites online, but they're also significantly more likely to be um, making purchases on both Urban Outfitters and ASOS. So these are a couple of, you know, a short list of, of brands that, you know, if you're targeting this segment, you can either identify other maybe non-luxury brands like uh, Supreme that they might be attracted to disproportionately or identifying other channels through which they are um, seeking out their, their favorite luxury um, or fashion brands to maybe partner with and identify it um, as possible channel drivers for you. I think, yeah, we're gonna go on to the social section now. Great, thanks, John. So, yeah, the final uh, area I wanted to touch on is social media. We actually have a lot of detail in the study on social. For our purposes today, though, I just wanted to touch on kind of the overall growth and also take a look at some of the top brands, specifically on Instagram and Facebook. So the number of luxury social media followers uh, grew by over 20% in the past year. 
Um, the 90 plus luxury brands in this study now have a combined total of like 677 million followers. Um, and that's across the three key social platforms we have here, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Instagram maintains its lead in number of followers, you can see in the pie chart, and grew the most at 23% year over year with Facebook next at 20% growth. Uh, the dominance of Instagram, which just a few years ago was typically a lot smaller piece of the pie, kind of speaks to the younger demos that are very much drawn to Instagram and use it, and the same demos that are not nearly as drawn to Facebook. Um, although I have to say, as I've noted, 20% growth for Facebook is not too shabby, uh, but Instagram is definitely the dominant format here, especially for luxury. Um, so in addition to kind of going at the sheer number of followers and likes, which are sort of vanity metrics in some ways, we're also interested in engagement data. So for Instagram, you know, we look at likes and comments, Facebook likes, comments, and shares. And all of these are sort of ranked in the full report, but we also come through you know, most of the highest engagement posts and just kind of look for commonalities or themes. And we have a, a variety of examples here. On the far left, you'll see that luxury sneaker post did very well. You know, this like Louis Vuitton's new runners, Carl, Log Carl Lagerfeld's collaboration with Vans. Um, in the middle, and kind of in a contrast to the post to the, uh, the left about the hot luxury sneakers, we also find in the middle there that the opposite can be true, that like there are very successful posts that celebrate sort of like the long, rich history and legacy of these brands, their founder stories. Two examples were like Christian Dior, I think it's a 70 year celebration, and Chanel was another celebration. I think that photo series is actually in Coco Chanel's apartment. Um, and then on the far right, there are celebrities and there's more collaboration even outside of sneakers. Um, celebrity spokespeople or brand ambassadors are both are nearly really a given at this point. Um, and you'll notice that that Harry Styles wearing a custom suit in concert. You'll notice that it has more likes than anything else here. And that just often happens with celebrity posts. And in fact, there were three different posts of Harry Styles wearing the, you know, custom suits, et cetera. And all of them had 600,000 each. So it's hard to go wrong even now with celebrity, or I guess you should say with the right to celebrity. Um, so here we have a look at the luxury brands with the highest number of Instagram followers. You know, So uh, Chanel, Louis Vuitton, and Gucci have the most. They have 24 million, over 24 million each. And something sort of worth noting is that these three brands lead by a wide margin over sites that actually get more brand site visitors than, than they do, specifically Michael Kors and Ralph Lauren, who are at the top of one of our prior charts in terms of market share. But here, you know, it's like Chanel has double the number of followers Michael Kors does and nearly triple the number of followers that Ralph Lauren has. So to keep from simply reporting on the same large brands over and over, because a, a lot of dominant players are going to remain dominant, we do sort through lower sections of the chart. We're kind of looking for notable successes beyond just being the biggest. Um, so in this case, we take a moment, we kind of explored Aquazora, which entered our Instagram chart for the first time with this study. And it's also among the, has the, among the highest average engagement rate of any of the luxury brands that we studied. So, and this is under the guidance of yet another millennial aged creative director, Edgardo Osorio. Um, and the brand has made a name for itself in one, one regard because of its high fashion slats. There's a picture there, but naturally got even more attention when Meghan Markle wore Aquazora shoes as part of the royal wedding celebration. And here is a look at luxury brands with the highest number of Facebook likes. And again, Louis Vuitton and Chanel are at the top of this list. Michael Kors actually fares relatively well on Facebook compared to Instagram. The demos, it's worth noting on Facebook, are a little bit older. So again, beyond sort of the big players that you can see here, um, there are notable stories further down in the listing with uh, Longchamp and Furla, both experiencing notable growth. And so I'm gonna just illustrate two examples here. Um, each of these brands, you know, kind of the examples here kind of point out the varied approaches that can work. So on the left, 
uh, Longchamp brought in Kendall Jenner um, as a brand ambassador. That was certainly a significant exercise in raising brand perception and awareness. Um, they have gained followers themselves. So we're knowing that gender, I'm uh, sorry, Kendall Jenner brings with her 16 million Facebook likes, all of her own. And on the right are two posts from Furula, uh, which are rather unique. On the far right are two whimsical bags. They're actually very whimsical bags. But they're being promoted here because they're only available online. Uh, but the other image of the, the celebrates Mother's Day is perhaps like the most unique. You know, they are, it's offering mother-daughter bags, and this in itself is sort of not typical. But even more striking are the photos. I mean, we simply don't see many parent and child photos in luxury site posts. Uh, but I bet it does strike a chord of source with millennial mothers. Uh, millennials go up to the late 30s at this point, and many of them are mothers, uh, who probably can relate in sort of very different ways than we're used to seeing from luxury brands with this particular offering. And so now we'd like to save time every year that we do this for uh, the holiday hot products picks from, from John and Hitwise. Thanks, thanks, Ben. This week, Jeff, this is a part of the presentation where Santa comes down uh, Fifth Avenue and, and, and takes us right into the holiday season. Um, but, you know, all joking aside, people are asking us every year what our picks for the hot products are going to be. And so we wanted to kind of um, give you guys an update of where we are. We just started releasing that list. Um, this week, this is starting with um, the first, the hot products of the first week of November. And we're going to be releasing those every week throughout the holiday season. So please, you know, if you're interested in being the first to be updated on that, follow us on Twitter and Facebook, and you'll be uh, you'll be treated to that hot products list every week. So if we start out um, just on the next slide, we're going to see this is looking at an aggregation of the hot products that we've seen across the various lists that we're compiling. And each week, we're going to be releasing. The hot products that people are searching for on on search engines like Google and Bing and, and whatnot, but we're also looking specifically at what um, they're looking for on Amazon because we know that again people are going straight to Amazon and skipping over um, search engines to, to, for a lot of their retail purchases, especially when it refers to um, products that Amazon owns and, and sells directly, like the the, the Amazon Echoes and, and um, Fire Sticks and whatnot. But if we look across both of those lists, some of the things that are in common, we see the Nintendo Switch is going to probably be really huge again this year. It was big last year. But also we're going to see a rotation of games uh, that go along with not only the Nintendo, Nintendo Switch, but also the Xbox and PlayStation 4. So we'll see rotations of of various video games kind of come and go each week throughout the season. In fact, we saw two games in our top 10 list for search engines last week alone. Um, we see Vans being the top, I think, apparel brand. And, you know, that maybe took the place of Uggs, which we, if, you're, if you track Hitwise back several years, Uggs used to be the number one brand, but we've moved on to Vans as being the number one apparel brand in our hot products list. We see a pretty decent um, setup for another showdown next this, this holiday season between Fitbit and Apple Watch. Fitbit is a little bit ahead of, of Apple right now, um, but last season Apple did kind of uh, win the battle overall just slightly, but we did see Fitbit putting up a pretty strong fight and um, heading into the holiday season pretty strongly. Uh, we see Roku and again other kind of streaming devices like the Fire Stick which we're definitely going to be um, seeing as people pick up new TVs um, and they want to get these new, um, you know, uh, over the top devices to go to go along with them. An iPhone last year did remarkably well. We didn't no, don't normally see um, phones in the holiday season, but we did last year, and it seems like the iPhone 10R and 10S are back. So we'll probably be seeing plenty of activity around people searching for the newest generation of iPhones and accessories and cases and whatnot to go along with them. Um, and then of course, to you know, round out the top 10, we can't forget to mention the Instant Pot. This, was, this is already among the top 10 items that people are searching for on Amazon, just waiting for their Black Friday and Cyber Monday for them to go on sale so they can pick them up again. We saw that being by far one of the top products in terms of Amazon purchases last year, I think the top non-Amazon product last year. So again, keep an eye on that heading into the into the holiday season. But again, check us out on Facebook and Twitter and every week we'll give you the latest. Um, but just to wrap this one up here, but before we go, I did kind of a focus on trending hot products in the fashion and apparel set because obviously that's, you know, people on this call are probably more 
uh, interested in that and thought this was also a fun way to look at trends outside of those those big top 10 products that we normally see. And we see um, the Teddy Coat, we saw uh, an increase of 526% uh, year over year. That would be the first week of November 2018 versus the first week of November 2017. Last week, we saw about 2,600 people searching for the Teddy Coat. Um, Gucci flip-flops, as we talked about earlier in the presentation, that casual um, luxury item is trending up. We saw a 262% increase in, in searches for that term last week. Um, men's hoodies are also up along with the men, the Sherpa jacket, which could be ma male or female. Um, same thing with blazers. We saw searches up 141% um, year over year. And then interestingly, we, um, we saw men's rings. So this could be uh, the sign of a, uh, of a bit of a comeback for, um, for men's rings this year. We saw about a double the number of, of, of searches for that term um, year over year. And then uh, to really wrap everything up and, and uh, point out the, the political season that we're in still, uh, even though the elections are over, we saw that one of the top trending products along with these um, other more fashionable items, it was the, um, the infamous iconic now, the MAGA hat. Um, if you've got an animation that will pull that up, I think it'll give you some numbers too. So about 3,500 people searching for that last week, which was up about 300% uh, year over year. So there's something for everybody uh, to put under their tree this year. And I think we'll just do a quick wrap up here. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, John. So um, uh, yeah, that was great. I love the hot products. Um, so, you know, we've been highlighting the data from the report, but of course, you know, everything is summarized in the printed study that kind of bookended with kind of data specific findings in the front, many of which I've spoke, some of which I've spoken to, and then kind of more on the thoughtful consideration uh, implications in the back of the study. And I think it's been, might have been missed already, but it, there will be, a, anyone attending will get a link to download the study um, after this presentation. So, uh, in terms of just a couple of the key takeaways, you know, we have this idea of luxury reinvented. You know, there's just incredible growth of online visitors, social followers, and sales, and that kind of creates a clear picture of what can be achieved. You know, luxury just keeps embracing change and new ways of thinking. Uh, millennially minded, you know, winning this generation has been a priority for the luxury sector for a couple of years now. Uh, it's because the, this generation, their influence, behavior, and values continue to drive lux positioning you know, product development and strategy as it is for many other sectors. Casual chic, you know, luxury fashion, as I said before, it's having its casual wear moment. It was having, it is still having, you know, this is sweatshirts, belt bags, slip on shoes, sneakers for sure are showing heightened levels of search interest. Um, and that is cultivating new audiences, new markets, revenue streams, and bringing more males to luxury brand sites. And at the bottom, or actually next to the bottom, search matters more than ever. You know, competition is growing and evolving across the board, and luxury brands have to work to own every, or as much as they can, every touch point with the consumer. And that starts, for certain, with a basic Google search. And then, John, on the Amazon front, sorry. Um, as oh, sorry. John, yeah, Amazon sorry. Is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just had my phone on mute. Um, yeah, we, we obviously are seeing Amazon as an emerging channel, even for luxury. Um, and again, while those luxury brands are primarily, uh, you know, selling fragrances right now, the search activity does really tell us that there's a desire there to buy more luxury apparel outside of that, that fragrance category um, than they're currently finding right now.